I don't know where you're from or where your ancestors are from. I'm Canadian and I love world travel. I love everything there has to do with travel, the food, the culture, the climate, and all those places that have literally been built up for me to go see and visit. It's fantastic. In my travels, I have learned that we all have families and we all have friends where we learn about love, money, culture, and we learn about certain beliefs. These are deep core beliefs such as, are you pro-life or pro-choice? Are you for or against euthanasia? Are you for or against choosing a gender identity? Does your opinion change with skin color? It is because of these beliefs and that of our family and friends that we feel like we're forced to choose sides. And when we feel forced to choose sides, that has created a problem. The problem is we now live in polarized times. I believe this, clash, you believe that, clash, I'm right, clash, you're wrong, clash, ethics, clash, culture, clash, morality, clash. But did you know that we have everything we need to solve this problem when our core beliefs clash and causes us, you and me, causes us pain? My name is Kimberly Klein, and I learned this standing on the sunny boulevard at the University of British Columbia many, many years ago. As a first year student, I wanted to make friends. So I signed up at a club table and was told, come on out. Next Friday, we're gonna hold up placards in support of babies as people are walking by. Now, I come from a Catholic family, and I went to a Catholic high school, and I thought that I'd make friends with like-minded people. People suffer loss, and I really thought that pro-life club members could be healers, could open a conversation, a loving conversation, about loss and anything else that comes up for people. This is the day of the silent pro-life protests. I show up on the boulevard, March 23rd, 2004. I'm all smiles and it's sunny skies everywhere. People are walking by as they're heading to their next class. The club president comes and hands me my placard. It's gigantic. Oh my God, it's a deformed fetus. I don't even know what to do. This, this is the loudest sign I've ever seen. Then this brunette, skinny jeans, intense eyes. I remember her mouth taking up 80% of her face. She looked at me and she screamed, how dare you? How dare you judge me? I was 15 years old. I had an abortion. I wanted to come to university. That's why I'm here. How dare you judge me? I didn't know what to do. Why isn't anybody stepping forward, doing something? Our horrific messaging had triggered a deeply buried daily pain. No one helped her. She walked away with tears in her eyes. No one broke the silence. And I froze. I couldn't move. My mind flashed back to grade 10. My teacher, Mr. Hill, He had square glasses, was bean pole skinny. He put our desks in a big circle. So we all faced each other. And we talked about everything, about controversial conversations, such as assisted suicide, euthanasia, 
gang violence. And we learned how controversial ideas became mainstream. These ideas planted into our minds. And then we noticed in our society. We looked at movies such as The Heathers from the 1980s that made the idea of teen suicide really popular, such that young people jumped on the bandwagon and committed suicide. Families were devastated and destroyed. I learned in that classroom that media and movies can make the unacceptable acceptable. That media, family, friends, and faith groups can make it feel like we have to choose a side. But Mr. Hill always said, it's a slippery slope. Don't fall into that trap. You have another option. That sunny day, UBC Boulevard, surrounded by people, I felt alone, but I remembered Mr. Hill's words, don't fall into that trap. You have another option. I stood there frozen in silence and no one noticed. After all, it was a silent protest, but afterward I gave my signs back and I never attended another pro-life event. Mr. Hill's words rang in my head. You have another option. Then I realized I'm not pro-life and I'm not pro-choice. Those options divide us. I have another option. That option is compassionate non-judgment. Listening to what people are saying without passing judgment on how things happened or what happened. For me, compassionate non-judgment was the right decision. A step in the right direction, but not enough. That night, I prayed to have the power to heal pain where the pregnancy ends. It has been 15 years since that silent protest changed the course of my life. Today, I am a non-traditional healer in the area of pregnancy loss. I have learned how grief can be lifted, not just for pregnancy loss, but for any human pain we suffer and is caused when our core beliefs clash. Mr. Hill, he gave us the first step. I realized that when we feel like we're forced to choose, it doesn't have to be right or wrong. We can choose compassionate non-judgment. We don't have to clash. It may feel like you must believe your family, friends, and faith groups and what they've taught you, but remember Mr. Hill's words. Don't fall into that trap. You have another option. We may think that we can convince people based on our logical explanations as to why we're right to come to our side. Yes, we just have to educate the other side as to why our theories are right. People, this has polarized us even more. This has gotten us to go to war with each other. But what if there is another way? What if the next time you are in a controversial conversation with someone, instead of shouting you're wrong, you step back and you listen with compassionate non-judgment. Mr. Hill gave us this first step. My life experience has taught me another step. When the issue is life and death, embrace your power as a human healer. When there is grief, deep grief due to loss, no matter how it happened, euthanasia, suicide, abortion, 
Acknowledge that that person is experiencing loss. Humans have spirits. Recognizing the spiritual nature can help us to relieve pain. When we connect human to human, spirit to spirit, and acknowledge those feelings of loss, we become human healers. Embrace your power as a human healer. I am a human healer in the area of pregnancy loss. When someone comes to me and they've had an abortion, a miscarriage, or a stillbirth, I don't go through how it happened. I don't ask questions like, is a fetus really a baby? If he had an abortion, did a baby actually die? Don't do that. All that does is stop the conversation and starts the morality clash, ethics clash, culture clash. As a human healer, what I do is I hold space for that person to share what's going on for them right now. And then I do three things. One, I acknowledge that their loss is real. Number two, I acknowledge all the things that they are going through right now. And number three is I hold space for them to share and to feel heard and understood. And that begins their healing process. We can all be human healers by holding space for people to feel heard and understood. Even though we are in polarized times with culture clash, ethics clash, morality clash. You and I, we can be the difference. Choose compassionate non-judgment. Choose to become a human healer. And when we do that, we can change our world.